Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to be showing you a website called Games to Learn English. I learned about this website a long time ago and I did check it out and play around with it a little bit, but I didn't really use it in my classes because I was using ClassIn and this website, game site, is not really that fun for students unless they're able to interact with the game themselves. So this is perfect for teachers who teach ESL, who use platforms like Koala Go, where there's a co-browser and the students can actually interact with the games. So first of all, the website, very easy. It's called gamestolearnenglish.com. And you will see there are tons of different types of games, similar to WordWall, where they have different types of games you can play with a set of words. So the nice thing is you could use this, like if you have five minutes at the end of class, you could just pull this up and click on one of the pre-selected sets. So here I would choose and you can see all the different categories they have. So the negative to this is the student might not know all of those words, which is fine for just a fun game at the end of class or for your more advanced students. But for your younger students, it could be a little um, frustrating if they just don't know some of the words. So if I click on it, I can see all the words. You can review them with your student and then you can click play. There's also games for sentences. Um, we have days, weather, jobs, clothes, time, so many different options for you to choose from that are pre-made. But this video is going to focus on you being able to create your own set of words to play with your students, which is excellent, especially for those younger students to review what they're learning in class and they're able to have fun playing the game to review them. So how do you make your own set? You're going to go up here to the teachers section and you have to sign in which it's very easy to sign in with a Google account. I already have it set up, so I'm gonna click on my Google and I'm gonna click on content. Here are my content sets. So I can create a set of images to use to play with the Games to Learn English games. You will see here, I've already created one set for level one, unit four, which is about colors and I was able to choose the exact pictures I wanted to use in the games. So let me show you how you can create your own set. Since I already have one, I'm gonna click on new set and notice it says find images. The one negative is you're not able to use, at least I haven't found a way to add your own images from your computer to create the games. You have to use the pre-selected images they have in their search. So let's say I'm doing a unit about animals. So I want the animals they are learning. So I'm gonna click dog, and then you are gonna see all the possible images you can use for a dog. I'm gonna use this one, and I'm gonna do cat. Same thing, I'm gonna click on the picture. When you scroll down, all the images you choose are now being entered down here. Notice it says minimum of five images. Since this is being put into a game, you have to have at least five. So let me add three more. Let's add a fish. Let's add a, let's see if they have a lizard. Lizard. And let's add a pig. Here we go. So I could add, of course, many more pictures, but I'm just going to do the five for right now. I can discard the entire set, or I can click the X on the image to discard just that image. Then I want to add a title. So I'm just going to call this animals for right now and I can add the type of audio I want. You can have either no audio, British female, or American male. I like to always use British accents anytime there's an audio option for a game because the student hears me every single class with my very American accent, and I know it's important for them to hear different accents. And a lot of their text in their classes at school they're learning British English and hearing those in their listening activities. So I always like to select British. You can, of course, select whatever you want. And then you have to click Save. Once you save, you're now saving that set. But don't worry, you can always delete that set anytime you want. You can edit that set anytime you want. But I have it saved up here. I can now see my two sets of images. Now, where are the games? 
when you click on that set and you scroll down, you will see the game options. You might not have all the different types of games that are available because remember, these are just words, vocabulary. So these are games that can be used with vocabulary. You're not gonna see any of the sentences because you're not able to create sentences. You're only able to add vocabulary images. So once I have all my games down here, I can select the game I want to play. And then I have the link for that game. I can either open it directly. So if you're just screen sharing on your platform, you can just open it. Or if you're wanting to use it in like a co-browser like Koala Go, you can copy that link. Then you would just paste it into the co-browser. And here is your game. So they're taking your words, your images, and putting it into the fast vocab. You can choose to review the words first with the student, or you can just go to start. And now here's the images I chose in the fast vocab game. So if I do cat, dog, fish, you can hear the audio there. And like I said, it's only really fun if the student is able to interact directly just drawing lines while the teacher gets to play is just not as fun. And you'll notice as they go, they add different types of activities. Here they have to click on the word. And again, there's lots of different types of games. We have Hangman, same thing. You can copy it and then paste into the browser. And now you have a Hangman game using your words where they can click on the letter and play the game, interact with the game on the co-browser. So lots of different types of games to play. Check it out. Um, like I said, you can use the pre-made ones or you can create your own sets. There is a homework task section, but you're going to notice there's a China warning, warning on both of these, that they links might not work in China. When I tested this a long time ago, I did test out the homework tasks because I wanted a way to send activities for my students to play at home. And a lot of my students were not able to get the games to load. So keep that in mind. I personally would just use this in class, but you could try sending the links to your students to play outside of class time. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye everyone.